Now let's con continue a little bit. Heterogeneous nucleation rate. Nucleation rate means how fast or per unit time how many nuclear form. And to get the nucleation rate, we need a few terms. The first one is the so-called site density. What does C1 is defined as? We define it as the number of atom, but the special atom. They are in contact with what? Your special size. You are either near the mode wall or near your foreign oxide inclusion. The number of atoms that are in contact with the homo heterogeneous sites per total liquid volume. Okay? And then that a G star, what is that? G hetero star, that's your heterogeneous critical nucleation energy, which is a, only a factor of the homogeneous one. Okay? And F1 is still the frequency of adding an atom to the heterogeneous nucleus. Okay? F1 is the frequency of adding atom. So the so-called heterogeneous nucleation rate, which means per unit volume, volume per time, how many nucleus would be, how frequent, F, how frequent we are adding atoms to a critical nucleus times how many atoms are in contact with the sp special size times what's the probability of overcoming what? The heterogeneous nucleation barrier. You see how we define the rate. Rate is defined as, okay, we need to form a nuclear, heterogeneous nucleus. But the heterogeneous nucleus is only forming at a specific site, that site density is C1. And then it still needs to overcome a barrier of delta G hetero star. And then we are adding, we are adding frequent adding atoms to that. That together give us the so-called heterogeneous nucleation rate. And then heterogeneous nucleation barrier would be homogeneous nucleation barrier times the as factor, right? The volume ratio between sphere cap to the whole sphere, that's our S theta term. And then the homogeneous term would be given as we did before, it's a inversely proportion to delta T under cooling square, okay? And if we put all this together, we would have the heterogeneous nucleation rate would be F1 C1, but we lump all this together, A, S theta, divided by delta T square. Because we are going to keep delta T square here. And then we are having the S theta term. You may ask what happens to this KT. That, that fact is much smaller than here. So that's kind of we neglect the KT term here. You see what I mean? We still have KT term here, but because the impact is much larger due to this delta T, we kind of dropped it from here to here. You see, we have a T term here. Make sense? But then when we have, we kind of dropped it when we write here, go down here. The temperature is here, but we dropped it. We only kept the delta T, the under cooling term. No, T is your actual temperature. Okay. Okay, so if we have this, we, if we are going to plot both delta G star and the nucleation rate versus what? Delta T is your so-called undercooling. We got a delta G star term goes like this. We have two curves. One is for data G star homogeneous, the other one is for data G star heterogeneous. For the same under cooling, for the same data T, the data G star hetero is much smaller than what? Data G star homo. Make sense? At any given under cooling, they have a fixed uh, ratio that depends on S theta. Make sense? That's for the top plot. 
at the same under cooling the he heterogeneous one would have a much lower value than the homogeneous in terms of the energy barrier and then the bottom plot is for n what does n mean nucleation rate what people would get is okay for the same under cooling heterogeneous homogeneous they would suddenly start but the heterogeneous one would start at a much lower under cooling which means at the same data t the heterogeneous is way way faster than homogeneous nucleation that's why typically typically if you are not too very careful you typically go through the so-called heterogeneous nucleation it happens at a specific location but much faster okay so that's kind of like uh, concludes here we said heterogeneous nucleation occurs typically at much smaller undercooling than homogeneous nucleation it goes at a much faster rate okay